Welcome to Lansing from a New Perspective. Uh, during this month's uh, episode, we're going to be talking about economic development. And specifically, we're going to be talking about a different type of economic development. And this economic development, typically when you hear about uh, that term, it's usually in context of municipalities offering tax abatements to specific industries, to specific companies. Um, and we're going to kind of shift uh, in, in line with the theme of the program. We're going to talk about it from a little bit different perspective. We're going to talk about it from the perspective of, of time. And it's all based on the premise that time is money. And coming out of project management, which I am, um, I uh, recognize that uh, all too well that sometimes uh, the timing of a project is actually more important than the cost of the project. And uh, especially if you're like an auto manufacturer and you're trying to um, have uh, an expansion of your plant done in time to support a job one date for an uh, auto manufacturer, you miss that job one day, you miss that contract, you miss all that opportunity for growth. So time can actually be very, very important. So uh, today I'd, li I'd like to welcome a couple guests here to talk about economic development in general. And uh, they've got a strong background in, in this area here in regards to what it takes to actually get Michigan moving again. And I'd like to uh, uh, welcome uh, Bill Elson to the program. Hello, Senator. Hi, it's good to have you here. I just want to give a little bit of background for the viewers so they know where you're coming from here. Bill is a senior vice president and general counsel with Fritz Enterprises Incorporated. Fritz Enterprises and its affiliates operate uh, primarily in the recycling sector, generating uh, um, and managing ferrous and non-ferrous metals and other recyclable materials. The affiliated group of companies are headquartered out in Trenton, Michigan in my district, and they have operations in Detroit, Belleville, Taylor, Trenton, River Rouge, Flint, Michigan, and with out-of-state operations in East Chicago, Indiana, Anniston, Alexandria, and Fairfield, Alabama, uh, Sparrows <coughs> Point, Maryland, and Tucson, Arizona. Um, Bill has worked with the affiliated group of companies in the Fritz family since 1980. He's a long uh, history of experience there in the area. And he's a graduate in 1973 of Wayne State University Law School, uh, undergraduate degree in accounting, and uh, is earning a CPA post-law school uh, graduation here. Um, so, welcome to the program, Bill. Thank you. Right, I'd also like to welcome David Palzerak. Uh, David is the uh, Vice President in Government Relations for the Lansing-based Small Business Association of Michigan. Um, prior to joining the association in 2009, uh, David uh, served as a state representative for Michigan's 101st District, that's up in Northwest uh, Michigan, from 2003 to 2008. And before being elected to the State House, he was Executive Director of Connect Michigan, a statewide co uh, coalition dedicated to broadband investment and competition and was director of public policy for the Michigan Association of Realtors, including his uh, staff service with Senator Michael Bouchard and Representative Dan Gustafson. Uh, David has uh, nearly 18 years of state legislative experience. Dave is a graduate of Michigan State University, and I won't hold that against him as a U of M graduate, and, but the, uh, and he and his wife Emily and their two children remain uh, or maintain residence in the Manistee and East Lansing area. So welcome as well, David. I appreciate you both being here for this discussion. Great to be here today, Senator. As well. Hey, I, I'm, I just want to toss by what I was talking about as far as looking at economic development from a new perspective. And an uh, initiative that I've been kicking, uh, uh, just started kicking off actually, and we uh, is uh, that uh, focuses on economic development from a, you know uh, looking at it from a time perspective and recognizing that um, you know the longer that companies sit on a given piece of property it's not generating jobs it's not generating uh, any income for the company or anything along those lines and we'd like to set up Michigan as kind of a destination place where we get people to work right away as fast as possible which means that we need to have the building that they're, they're working in developed and, and operational as quickly as possible. So kind of came up with the idea for this timed initiative, which actually is an acronym because I'm an engineer. You've got to come up with an acronym. Time is money, economic <coughs> development. That's what time stands for. And the basic premise is that we want to look at all the different hoops and hurdles that we have to go through for, for our development projects at the federal, the state, the county, and local municipality level um, throughout, uh, throughout our state. And I also want to highlight um, as a stretch goal, actually define a reference model for something else that another area that often stalls a lot of projects, and that's on the uh, litigation front, uh, and it deals with utilities and routing utilities like water and sewage, electricity and data lines out to properties. And we want to establish a reference model that can be used consistently across the state. Um, so there's a couple different areas. One is basically all government timelines, and then you talk about the utilities and the reference model. It actually um, 
highlights uh, you know more private enterprise and kind of identify some baseline expectations to kind of help keep people out of court and get people working. Yeah. Um, so I was just wondering uh, from what your experience is and, and maybe Bill can start with you sure. in, in regards to where do you think that this uh, new perspective may be of, uh, of assistance and if there's any concerns you have with that type of approach, well, let me know too. Well, our companies are uh, members of ISRI, which is the Institute of Scrap Recycling Industries. Mm -hmm. And we recently had a meeting with uh, Director Wyant about the permit and regulatory jurisdiction exercised by the DEQ on much of what we do. Um, we deal with uh, material that has to be processed that uh, would otherwise go to landfills, so there's a benefit in not having that material go to landfills. Mm -hmm. In addition, the materials that we process are reused and the energy consumption on that reuse is significantly less than what it would do, what would be required out of natural materials. Mm -hmm. And what, one of the issues that we had discussed with the director was the difficulty in the regulated community dealing with the regulators. Yeah. And one, one of the perspectives that we had mentioned to the director was oftentimes um, regulators will act as legislators, not regulators. Yeah. And as a consequence, uh, you are negotiating issues that uh, may not be required specifically by statute, but is effectively held up uh, to you as saying the permit will not be issued. I can give you a specific example of uh, some difficulty we had and still have not yet developed a piece of property down on, uh, in, on King and, and Telegraph Road. Um, we own uh, about 450 acres there. Mm -hmm. uh, there are wetlands on that property. Uh, they had been designated, uh, they were outlined, uh, and we spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on the wetland study, a botanical study that was required by the DEQ. How long did that take, too? I mean, it's not well, just the, the money sometimes. It's, uh, well, the botanical study required at least a year because we were required to identify plant species during all four, all four seasons. Um, and what, what we ultimately, we had, we had two uh, interesting stories, uh, although it ultimately scuttled the project. Uh, was the time scuttled the project was that uh, we were requested by the u.s fish and wildlife to do an indiana bat study on this property mm -hmm. uh, the indiana brown bat is a species that uh, is identified through its habitat and uh, that study cost us over fifty thousand dollars to conduct and an indiana bat had not been seen in southeastern michigan since before the civil war so we were dealing with a potential issue on a species that hadn't been sighted in over 150 years. That has a way of stretching out uh, the pocketbook as well as the timeline. Well, ultimately what happened was, uh, after having designated the wetlands, and this particular property has wetlands that are dispersed, so we had to be very careful as to where this potential development might go through them. We were going to build houses there. Now, how many jobs would have been created just for the construction portion of that if it, you would have been able to, to develop in a timely fashion? Dozens of jobs. I mean, uh, in addition to the developer who would have had put in the infrastructure, you'd have all those homes that would have been built. Yeah. And, and one of the issues that came up in connection with the wetlands, which you could not really respond to, was in addition to exercising jurisdiction over wetlands, which they do have jurisdiction and properly so, mm -hmm. um, we were asked questions about what the developer would have with respect, what development on the uplands would have with respect to the wetlands. So effectively, the jurisdictional um, footprint was expanding beyond beyond the wetlands, and it, ultimately the project never got off the ground. We we worked on it for over two years, maybe three years, uh, which was the second of a number of projects we tried on this piece, and still haven't gotten a permit. I, I, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm seeing that people are unemployed and looking for for jobs in Michigan, that just brings a, I, that that frustrates me to no end. And uh, I, I was wondering, uh, um, David, do you have any similar uh, stories to share? With well, me? unfortunately, um, you hear a story like this, and, and you're, the hope that you have is that this is just anecdotal and this yeah. is just one incident. But unfortunately. Um, my experience has borne a little different uh, reality, and that is that situations like this exist in every legislative district, in every county, in every um, city. 
uh, across the state is really a systemic problem that we've had for a long time. It's um, yeah, when I was in the legislature, I was the chair of the environmental committee. I heard many horror stories, just like the one you're telling. I experienced them as a, a lawmaker, and now representing some 10,000 businesses across the state of Michigan, I hear them uh, on a very regular basis, as they call in for help. I, yeah. And so, um, unfortunately, you would hope that this was just a bad incident, that one, you know, an isolated incident that happened in the state. But unfortunately. Um, it is a pretty systemic problem, and uh, I'm very encouraged about your your uh, your your outlook on on what you're proposing, uh, mainly because it goes to the old adage, "Time is money." Yeah. Um, and I think people can understand that, and um, you know we need to try to break down barriers to help people uh, that want to invest in our state. And I think uh, you know uh, from what our experience is, is that there's a um, a recognition that that needs to happen finally. So, and we're not talking about shredding the environment or anything like this. This is in case of that the the Indiana bat. I mean, this is a case where that that if you were looking at this and trying to be rational about where you'd focus your efforts or energies in regard to protecting the environment, um, you wouldn't focus on something that hasn't been spotted in the state for years. Uh, and and you kind of got to wonder where's the where's the balance and some of the decisions that are being made on it versus and I. I I hate to, I mean, extrapolate into what they were thinking on that, but I, I, you just got to be concerned what's actually driving their thinking when they, they add that to the uh, list of studies that are required. Well, the, and there is a balance, and uh, the regulators have a job to do, a very important job to do, yeah. and they are continually asked to make that balance. And it is, I suppose it is appropriate for them to consider the impact of what they do. I know Director Wine had said that, um, uh, he is uh, putting forth an initiative uh, or directive really through the governor who has also made the same request to uh, to have that jurisdiction appropriately applied applied in, the, in a reasonably quick manner so that uh, development can take place uh, and the opportunities for development don't evaporate. And in, in our example on the piece that I described, the economy fell apart in 2008, and by the time we had gotten right. through those studies, uh, it, 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 it would have been very difficult. What kind of business environment would we have for Michigan, and what kind of signal would be telling other people uh, outside or companies willing to invest in Michigan that uh, all you need to do in order to set up shop here in Michigan was you apply for your permit on it, Make sure that you understand some of the key regulations and some of our key concerns about protecting our environment because we take our environment very seriously in Michigan. But we make a conscious effort to get the government off the critical path on your development. So we're not going to be a roadblock. We're not going to be um, adding delays to your uh, um, any of your development projects. It's all going to be about whatever it takes to, for however long it takes for you to go off and plan, design, and build your respective uh, um, uh, development. Uh, I there, mean, there needs that. to be a, a greater balance, too, that there's an assumption that the person that's making the investment wants to do the right thing. Yeah. There's an, there should be an assumption that the person um, has a, a, um, an interest in making sure that he doesn't devalue a property yeah. uh, because he's putting money or she's putting money into it. and. It seems that that's one of the areas where we've really kind of lost our way is that there's an yeah. assumption of guilt exactly, uh, yeah. by those who are trying to develop and invest in our state. And we really need to change that paradigm uh, around so that we're embracing people and making sure that they are doing the right things by the environment, and being stewards of the environment, and making sure that they're doing the necessary protection. But it seems to me that it's being bogged down uh, when you have to wait a, week, a year or two years to do a, 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 a certain project. In some cases, um, they, and I don't know if this has happened to you, but uh, folks have reported that you know maybe they had a form that was incomplete and the regulator gets to it and it says, well, this form is uh, incomplete, we're gonna put you to the back of the line. Yeah. And you have to start all over again. So we really need to do a better job